this video, I'm going to tell you how I wasted two years of my life coding in Python and why I'm officially going back to Ruby. If you're a Python developer, relax. Before you get mad at me, watch this video until the end. Remember how, about two years ago, we had that explosion of AI tools? Every single day, new websites were popping up, listing the 100 best AI tools. And I even built a site myself just to map those tools. That deep dive into AI tools put me into a bunch of open source projects. And almost all the fun was in Python. The coolest libraries, the new frameworks, everything was born there. Whenever I looked for something Ruby, almost nothing new was coming out at the same speed. At the same time, our code editors were getting superpowers. With a single prompt, you could easily understand Python code or any other language. Since I already had many years of experience coding in Ruby, I thought, if I already master programming, learning Python syntax is going to be the easy part. So then came the conclusion. If I wanted to ride the wave and speed up my career, I had to move to Python. Take advantage of Pandas to work with data, fast API, and much more. And then I decided to dive headfirst into that world. The first red flag. I was really convinced Python was the right path. I got so excited about learning it that I decided I could also teach other people to follow that path. So I created a project called Python 365 Days. The idea was simple and ambitious. Publish Python content every single day. Things like installation, setup, functions, variables, and... In practice, I only managed to ship four posts. My CTO routine plus family and other projects completely run over my plan. That was my first real failure with Python. A very clear warning sign that I chose to ignore. When I decided to build real AI agents in Python, it felt like a new framework was coming out every single week. Langchain, Autogen, Crew AI, hundreds of variations. I studied all of them and the feeling was always the same. A lot of magic, a lot of layers, very little control. Then I found a framework called PocketFlow. The promise sounded perfect for someone coming from Ruby. In under 100 lines, you'd have a complete agent, all the orchestration hidden behind an elegant abstraction. I got really hyped, started building my whole agent on top of it, using FastAPI on the outside. It worked, I had a lot of fun. It felt like I had finally found a new precious gem. I'll leave the PocketFlow link in the description. If I were to stay in Python, that would probably be my bet. What is an AI agent, really? At the center, you have the LLM, but it's just the brain that processes text. Around it, there are several organs, and if any of them are missing, the agent simply doesn't survive. I like to break this down into nine clear building blocks. First, input. Everything that enters the system. Text, events, webhooks, raw payloads. Then, guardrails, the first layer of safety and scope where I block abuse, illegal stuff, or questions the agent shouldn't even try to answer. Next comes memory. The agent remembers what happened before, conversation history, what it knows about the user. When needed, it pulls external context with reg before calling the model. The fourth block is context. Here, I assemble the package that goes to the model. Clean input, relevant memory, system rules, examples, and the exact response format. Fifth. Tools, the agent's actions in the real world, calling APIs, databases, queues, internal services, always with retries, timeouts, and circuit breakers so nothing gets stuck. Sixth, human. For sensitive actions, I can put a human in the loop to review, approve, or edit before executing. Seventh, LLM, the text brain that receives all this context, decides the next step, and generates instructions or answers. Eighth, Observability, step-by-step, -step, structured logs, metrics, tracing, alerts, and a queue switch to shut the agent down if something goes out of control. And finally, output, the final response that goes back to the user. It can be text, JSON, a completed action, or a very clear next step. When you see an agent this way, it's obvious it's not just a single API call to the model. It's data flow, business logic, and operations. 
And any language that can orchestrate these blocks well works. Python, Ruby, Go, whatever. Then one day I stopped and asked myself, what if I build the exact same thing, but in Ruby? I already knew the ecosystem well, so I went looking for what existed in Ruby for AI and found the Ruby LLM gem. I read the docs in just a few minutes and the feeling was immediate. It was like someone had translated Python's framework chaos into the Ruby way of thinking. At the same time, it fixed an old pain. I missed active record, Rails native job and queue system. That way of working that's been with me since 2008. Suddenly I had those tools back in my toolbox, now talking directly to AI models. In a matter of hours, I had something equivalent to what took me days to wrestle into shaping Python. But now, with idiomatic code using the gems and patterns that had always worked for me. And the best part? When I look at that Ruby file, I understand exactly what's going on. I can maintain it, I can evolve it. I was back home. I had finally found my place. Ruby LLM gives me one beautiful Ruby API for GPT, Claude, Gemini, and more. The same interface for chat, tools, reg, images, audio, moderation, and Rails integration. It's the engine behind everything I'm going to build on this channel. In practice, that means I can go from idea to production feature without switching libraries, without fighting a different SDK for every single service. Instead of collecting loose Python scripts, I have a solid Rails code base with jobs, queues, logs, and tests, where AI comes in as just one more layer of business logic. That's the engine behind this channel, Ruby on AI. Less friction, more real product to production. And if all you want is to just ask the model a question, you start simple. Create a chat with rubyllm.chat and call chat.ask. What's the best way to learn Ruby? That's it. And when you want to go further, that same chat can analyze almost anything. An image, what's in this photo? A video, what's happening here? The audio from a meeting, a contract PDF, or even several files at once. And if you want to generate images, it stays simple. You just describe the scene in one sentence. A sunset over mountains in watercolor style. And Ruby LLM sends the finished image back, ready to use. And if you have a recorded meeting or a quick voice note on your phone, you just send that file to Ruby LLM and it turns everything into text, ready for you to read, search and reuse later. And when you need to make sure content doesn't cross the line, hate speech, spam, abuse, you can ask Ruby LLM to check if a piece of text is safe before you show it or store it. And on top of all that, Ruby LLM goes even further. It understands images and video, plugs straight into your Rails apps and lets you switch between dozens of models, GPT, Claude, Gemini and more without paying, while you keep writing idiomatic Ruby. Ruby was the language that changed my life once, and now, with AI, it's changing it again. I'm genuinely thankful for everything I learned with Python, but I realize what I really love is building products, not training low-level models, where Python honestly shines. That was my path. Yours might be different, and that's okay. If this story resonated with you, subscribe to the channel, hit like, and tell me in the comments how your journey building AI-powered apps has been so far.